Nichiren Daishonin expresses concern over your ailing health, emphasizing the profound significance of embracing the Lotus Sutra in preparing one's mind for the journey beyond this transient existence. With compassionate wisdom, he illuminates the essence of Shakyamuni Buddha's teachings, guiding you towards the supreme path of enlightenment. Nichiren Daishonin affirms that while the Buddha expounded various teachings during his lifetime, he ultimately proclaimed the Lotus Sutra as the culmination of his teachings, discarding all provisional doctrines. Honestly discarding the provisional teachings, I will expound only the supreme way, the Buddha declared, a truth further validated by Taho Buddha's emergence and the assembled Buddhas extending their tongues in affirmation. Yet, Nichiren Daishonin laments, even among the followers of Buddhism we find those who reject this testimony and instead have devout faith in the provisional teachings preached before the Lotus Sutra, such as the Nembutsu. He likens such individuals to a person who clings to the transfer deed already nullified by his parent and refuses to accept its revised version, deeming them unfilial to the Buddha's ultimate truth. Quoting the Lotus Sutra, Nichiren Daishonin emphasizes the profound debt of gratitude owed to Shakyamuni Buddha, the sole enlightened being who embodies the virtues of parent, teacher, and sovereign. Could those who disobey the teaching of the one who is their parent, teacher, and sovereign not be abandoned by both heavenly gods and earthly deities? He implores, underscoring the grave consequences of rejecting the Lotus Sutra's primacy? Nichiren Daishonin acknowledges the formidable obstacles that beset practitioners in the defiled latter age, rife with the five impurities. Now is the time when, because the impurity of thought prevails, more people fall into the evil paths with the intention of creating good causes than they do by committing evil, he laments, warning against the seductive lure of lesser good deeds that undermine the supreme virtue of the Lotus Sutra. With resolute conviction, Nichiren Daishonin proclaims the unique affinity between the people of Japan and the Lotus Sutra, citing the testimonies of eminent Buddhist scholars. According to the opinions of my virtuous predecessors, people in the country of Japan have a capacity suited solely to the Lotus Sutra, he asserts, exhorting the embrace of this sublime teaching as the sole path to liberation. Addressing the insidious influence of the Nembutsu teachings propagated by Honen, Nichiren Daishonin likens their adherence to treasuring tiles and pebbles and calling them bright jewels, forsaking the true jewel of the Lotus Sutra. With unwavering fortitude, he recounts the persecution he has endured, proclaiming, I, Nichiren, alone have read the sutra with my entire being. This is the meaning of the passage that says, we do not hold our own lives dear. We value only the supreme way. Nichiren Daishonin's profound exhortations resonate with the urgency of embracing the Lotus Sutra's teachings, lest one succumb to the perilous currents of the latter age. His words are a clarion call, imploring you to uphold steadfast faith in this supreme doctrine, the sole path to attaining the enlightened state of Buddhahood. A wellspring of profound wisdom illuminating the path to liberation from the sufferings of birth and death. His words resonate with an unwavering conviction in the Lotus Sutra's supreme truth, a beacon of hope amidst the formidable currents of the latter age. Addressing your wavering faith, Nichiren Daishonin admonishes, you, heeding my assertion, discarded the Nembutsu and embraced the Lotus Sutra. But by now you must surely have reverted to being a follower of the Nembutsu. He likens such backsliding to a rock from a mountain peak hurtling down to the valley below, or like rain in the skies falling to the ground, warning of the grave consequence of falling into the Avicii hell. Nichiren Daishonin expresses empathy for the misguided influence of your family, acknowledging their well-intentioned but deluded urgings to embrace the Nembutsu. You should consider them, however, as people deluded by the followers of the diabolical Honen, he counsels, exhorting you to resist their entreaties and arouse strong faith in the Lotus Sutra's sanctity. With a seasoned perspective, he dismisses the flimsy arguments of Nembutsu adherence, declaring, if the passages of proof offered to support the claim that the Nembutsu does in truth lead to rebirth in the pure land were reliable, then in the past 12 years, would they consistently have failed to refute me? Nichiren Daishonin's confidence in the Lotus Sutra's primacy is unshakable, fortified by the impotence of opposing doctrines. 
Yet, this conviction has exacted a heavy toll, as Nichiren Daishonin recounts the harrowing account of an ambush by Nembutsu believers. Arrows fell on us like rain, and swords descended like lightning. It seemed that I was doomed, he recalls, underscoring the grave peril he has braved in upholding the Lotus Sutra's truth. Undeterred, Nichiren Daishonin proclaims with resolute pride, I, Nichiren, alone have read the sutra with my entire being. This is the meaning of the passage that says, we do not hold our own lives dear. We value only the supreme way. I, Nichiren, am therefore the foremost votary of the Lotus Sutra in Japan. As you confront the uncertainties of life and death, Nichiren Daishonin offers guidance, urging you to declare your allegiance to the Lotus Sutra's teachings before the heavenly deities. Declare yourself to be a disciple of the priest Nichiren, the foremost votary of the Lotus Sutra in Japan. Then they cannot possibly treat you discourteously, he assures, promising the blessings that accompany unwavering faith. Yet, should you waver, harboring divided loyalties between the Lotus Sutra and Nembutsu teachings, Nichiren Daishonin cautions, they will never accept your word. If that should happen, do not resent me later. His admonition underscores the grave consequences of vacillating from the supreme path of the Lotus Sutra. Nichiren Daishonin's epistle resonates with a profound urgency, born of his indomitable spirit and unwavering commitment to upholding the Lotus Sutra's primacy. His words cut through the delusions of the latter age, illuminating the singular truth that unlocks the gateway to enlightenment for all humanity. Nichiren Daishonin's impassioned exhortations reach their crescendo as he underscores the grave stakes of embracing the Lotus Sutra's teachings with unwavering faith. His words reverberate with a profound sense of mission, fueled by an inextinguishable conviction in the Sutra's supreme truth and its promise of liberation. Addressing the profound karmic consequences of abandoning the Lotus Sutra, Nichiren Daishonin cites the plight of those related to the sons of Deitsu Buddha, who had to spend the duration of Sanzen Jintengo, and those who received the seed of Buddhahood in the remote past, the length of Gohiaku Jintengo, in the evil paths. He attributes their dire fate to the grave transgression of discarding the Lotus Sutra, falling back to the provisional teachings such as the Nembutsu, after encountering very evil companions. Nichiren Daishonin's fervent admonitions underscore the grave peril posed by the seductive allure of provisional teachings, which threaten to ensnare even those blessed with the seed of Buddhahood. Whatever they may say, no matter how cleverly they may try to deceive you into discarding the Lotus Sutra, do not assent to it, he implores, his words resonating with the urgency of safeguarding one's spiritual destiny. Quoting the Lotus Sutra's ominous prophecy, the people will resent the Lotus Sutra and find it extremely difficult to believe, Nichiren Daishonin affirms his solitary role as the embodiment of this foretold persecution. Not one person has ever suffered injury on account of the Lotus Sutra. I, Nichiren, alone have read the sutra with my entire being, he declares, casting himself as the foremost champion of the Lotus Sutra's cause in Japan. Nichiren Daishonin's defiant stance echoes the sutra's exhortation, we do not hold our own lives dear. We value only the supreme way. His willingness to brave overwhelming adversity, enduring violent assaults and attempted assassinations, testifies to the depths of his conviction in upholding the Lotus Sutra's noble teachings. As you confront the ultimate transition, Nichiren Daishonin offers a profound reassurance, the promise of the Lotus Sutra's blessings in this life and beyond. Yet, since the Lotus Sutra answers one's prayers for matters of this life as well, you may still survive your illness, he consoles, extending the hope of recovery through the Sutra's compassionate workings. Nichiren Daishonin's concluding words resonate with the heartfelt urgency of one whose life's mission has been the propagation of the Lotus Sutra's supreme truth. Words cannot all be set down in a letter, and a letter will not adequately convey one's thoughts, so I will stop for now, he concedes, hinting at the profound depths of wisdom yet to be imparted through personal counsel. Throughout his epistle, Nichiren Daishonin's voice resonates with the clarion call of a sage, imploring all people to heed the Lotus Sutra's teachings and thereby attain the supreme enlightenment of Buddhahood. 
His words transcend the constraints of time and culture, reverberating as a timeless beacon illuminating the path to liberation from the sufferings of birth and death. His words resonating with the fervent conviction of one who has staked his very existence on upholding the Lotus Sutra's supreme truth. With profound compassion and unyielding courage, he implores you to embrace this sublime teaching, casting aside all lesser paths that inevitably lead to spiritual ruin. Quoting the Lotus Sutra's dire prophecy, Nichiren Daishonin laments, the people will resent the Lotus Sutra and find it extremely difficult to believe. Yet, he stands unwavering, declaring with defiant pride, I, Nichiren, alone have read the sutra with my entire being. This is the meaning of the passage that says, we do not hold our own lives dear. We value only the supreme way. Recounting the harrowing ambush by Nembutsu believers, where arrows fell on us like rain, and swords descended like lightning, Nichiren Daishonin's words bear witness to the grave perils he has endured in upholding the Lotus Sutra's noble cause. His indomitable spirit resonates in the assertion, I, Nichiren, am therefore the foremost votary of the Lotus Sutra in Japan. With profound wisdom born of his unwavering conviction, Nichiren Daishonin counsels you to declare your allegiance to the Lotus Sutra before the heavenly deities upon your impending departure from this world. Declare yourself to be a disciple of the priest Nichiren, the foremost votary of the Lotus Sutra in Japan. Then they cannot possibly treat you discourteously, he assures, promising the blessings that accompany steadfast faith. Yet, his admonitions are equally stern, warning of the grave karmic consequences that await those who forsake the Lotus Sutra's teachings, even after receiving the seed of Buddhahood in the remote past. Nichiren Daishonin cites the dire fate of such individuals, condemned to languish in the evil paths for unfathomable eons, the length of Gohiaku Jintengo, a sobering reminder of the profound stakes involved. Throughout his impassioned discourse, Nichiren Daishonin's voice resounds with the fervor of a sage utterly committed to the propagation of the Lotus Sutra's teachings. He acknowledges the insidious allure of provisional doctrines like the Nembutsu, likening their adherence to treasuring tiles and pebbles and calling them bright jewels. Yet, his conviction in the Lotus Sutra's primacy remains unshakable, fortified by the impotence of opposing arguments to refute his assertions over the course of 12 years. As you confront the ultimate transition, Nichiren Daishonin's words offer a profound solace, the promise of the Lotus Sutra's blessings, capable of answering prayers for matters of this life as well. His parting words hint at the profound depths of wisdom yet to be imparted through personal counsel, a tantalizing glimpse into the boundless realms of enlightenment awaiting those who steadfastly uphold the Lotus Sutra's supreme truth. Nichiren Daishonin's epistle resounds as a timeless clarion call, exhorting all people to cast aside the shackles of delusion and embrace the Lotus Sutra's teachings, the sole path to attaining the supreme enlightenment of Buddhahood. His indomitable spirit, forged in the crucible of unrelenting persecution, stands as an enduring beacon, illuminating the way for all seekers of truth.